Hey fellow traders, welcome back to a new trading video. So in today's video, I'm going to show you three profitable doji candlestick patterns that you must know, okay? These three patterns will help you to find trades at a good location, okay? And if you can apply it correctly, you are able to get a very nice risk to reward using dojis, okay? So let's get into today's lesson. So what will you learn in today's lesson? Okay, so I'll start off by sharing with you what is a doji. Okay, then I'll go on to tell you how not to trade dojis. Okay, because uh, I do, do not want you to apply whatever I teach you in this video in the wrong context. Okay, then I'll show you the three types of dojis that you can use. You can start applying uh, today, right? You can start looking at the charts today and start applying them. And lastly, I'll end off with some case studies on how to trade them so that uh, that will help you uh, you know, really understand how to apply these three dojis that are taught in this lesson, okay? So, what is a doji, okay? A doji is actually a candlestick pattern where you have the open and close price being uh, the same, okay? Or very similar, okay? So, you can see in this picture over here, uh, you have the, the, the standard doji, okay? So, it's flat because the opening price and the closing price is the same, okay? Now, I've seen a lot of people get, you know, very, you know, they, they get very confused about dojis because, you know, they ask questions like, oh, um, this is the open price and this is the close price. You know, it's not identical. You know, the uh, opening and the close price is not identical. Can I consider this as a doji? Okay, so as a general rule of time, uh, there's really no need to complicate things uh, when it comes to, you know, trading dojis, okay? As long as the uh, price is very close, okay? The opening and closing price is very close and you see a very tight candle body such as this, okay? Then uh, you can call it a doji, okay? Of course, uh, do not call something like this a doji, okay? Uh, you know, a candle that has a very wide body. Let's say the open is here, okay? And uh, the close is here. Okay, this is not a doji, okay? The key characteristics of a doji is that you have a very tight body, okay? And the open and close price is very close, okay? You do not need to have a fixed rule about, you know, oh, it cannot be more than 10%, it cannot be more than 20% of the entire board uh, range of the candle, okay? There's really no need for that, okay? So a doji has very tight body and the open and close price is the, almost the same. Okay, that's all you need to know. Okay, that's a doji for you. Okay, so you have the classic doji over here. Okay, and you have these three dojis. Okay, which uh, I'll go into depth in a later part of this uh, training video. Okay, so you have the long leg doji and you have the dragonfly doji and gravestone. Okay, so dragonfly and gravestone is actually the same. It's just the uh, one is bullish, this one is bullish. Okay, and this one is uh, bearish. Okay, this one is kind of like a buy signal and this one is like a sell signal. Okay, so uh, I'll go into the details uh, later on. Okay, so now let's talk about how not to trade dojis. Okay, because uh, I, I, I do not want you to take this out of context and start anyhow, you know, trading every single dojis. Okay, there are a lot of trading videos online uh, that teaches you how to trade dojis, but uh, I think they do not tell you that uh, you do not trade dojis in isolation. Okay, so what happens is that a lot of uh, new traders, uh, they come into, you know, the forex market or, you know, any financial markets and they start, you know, trading every single doji, all right? They, they, they just look at a chart and then they see this doji, they trade, you know, they see this one, they trade, they see this, they trade, okay? Um, that, that's, that's not the way to do it, okay? So it's very, very important that uh, I cover this right? You always want to consider the market context, okay? Market context, okay? So, what do I mean by a market context, okay? Because, uh, you know, it, it, that's a very broad term, okay? What I mean by the market context is, is price in an uptrend, okay? Uh, is it in a downtrend or is it consolidating, okay? Okay, so in an uptrend, it's very simple, okay? Uh, you have a high, okay? You have a low, you have a higher high and you have a higher low, okay? When you see this, then you can say that, okay, price is in an uptrend, okay? So in an uptrend, you want to buy dojis of support, okay? Let's say price comes down here and there's a support here, you buy a doji over here, okay? You buy something like this, this doji over here, that's fine, okay? You do not want to do counter trend dojis like trying to catch the top here. Okay, so that's how you consider the market context. Okay, this is the uptrend. Downtrend is the opposite. Okay, in a range, uh, it's very simple. You just want to buy low. Okay.
okay, and you want to sell high. So uh, in a range, you just want to identify the, uh, the upper resistance and lower resistance. Then you look for a doji off the top of the resistance or you know, uh, a doji off the support, which is the bottom of the range. Okay, so you just need to ask yourself two questions when you want to trade uh, dojis. Okay, ask yourself what is the market condition? Okay, is it in the uptrend? Okay, is it in the downtrend? Or is it, is it consolidating? Okay, once you answer this question, then you will know what to do. You, you know whether you want to be buying or you want to be selling. Okay, then the next question is uh, you want to look at uh, the levels. You want to look at a price, price level. Okay, is price at a support or resistance level? Okay, in an uptrend, you want to be buying at support. In a downtrend, you want to be selling at resistance. And in a range, you can be buying and selling at uh, the support and resistance. Okay, so please do not trade uh, dojis in isolation. Okay, it's very dangerous if you just, you know, uh, close your eyes, do not understand market context, and you start trading every single doji. Okay, please do not do that. Okay, that is the fastest way to blow your trading account. Okay, so by the way, if you are new to this channel, we have a free day trading guide for you that teaches you how to identify the market condition. Okay, uh, the link is in the description. Okay, it's it's a I think a forty five page a day trading guide. It's very comprehensive. So make sure you download that if you have not. Okay, uh, so please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel because uh, we create a lot of videos like this that take you from a struggling trader into a profitable trader. Okay, we have tons of videos, right? So make sure you check out our other videos. Okay, uh, we teach you a lot of things that uh, we paid a lot of money uh, to learn okay we made it all free for you on YouTube okay so just make sure you check the rest of our videos out and give us the uh, thumbs up okay so let's go into uh, the crux of today's video which is the three types of dojis and how to trade them okay uh, I don't just want to show you what the three types of dojis are but I want to give you you know some ideas on how you can actually trade them and how you can make it practical for you. Okay, remember, watching this video on its own is not going to help you. You need to apply it and that's why I want to show you how to trade them and give you a case study. Okay, so the first kind of uh, doji that we have is a long leg doji. Okay, you can see over here, long leg doji and it looks something like this. So uh, as the name implies, it's very simple. You have a long upper wig and you have a long lower wig, right? As the name suggests, long leg, okay? So it's pretty common sense. Long leg means long legs, right? Long upper wig, long lower wig, okay? So what usually happens when you see a long leg doji is that it, it, it usually happens when there is a high impact news, okay? What do I mean by high impact news? I mean events such as uh, FOMC, uh, you know, NFP, okay? Let me just write that down. FOMC, okay, NFP. And, uh, you know, like interest rates, uh, unemployment rates, this kind of high impact uh, economic data, okay? This is when price will spike uh, both directions because the, uh, the, you know, the market is trying to whip out our uh, weak holders. Whether you buy or sell, uh, you get whipped both ways, okay? So this usually happens during high impact news and it's a very good uh, way to identify support and resistance because when price spike during a high impact news, you can tell that uh, this is the very important level and this is the very important uh, support, okay? So in this case, uh, what you want to do is that uh, you want to watch for a price reaction at the high and the low, okay? So in this case, uh, I've marked out this rate is, uh, I'll mark it out as a resistance and this one I'll mark it out as support, okay? So you just want to mark it out whenever you see a candle like this with very long upper weight and very long uh, lower weight. You want to take note of the high here, okay? And you want to take note of the low over here, okay? So what you do is that you want to watch for a reaction at these two levels, okay? If this level is broken, then you know that the price is likely to go up further, okay? So basically, you are using this as a form of reference, okay? If this level is holding, then you know that price is going down, okay? Same thing uh, for the low, okay? If price is being supported, then you should expect price to go higher. But if this level is broken, then uh, you should expect price to uh, go lower, okay? So it's very simple. Let me show you in a chart how does this look like, okay? So step one, very simple. Okay, uh, I mentioned that you want to map out the high and low. So in this case, we are looking at this candle over here. So I mapped out the high at uh, 1.1239 and the low at 1.1374. Uh, okay, so you can see there's nothing groundbreaking about this. It. It's very simple. It's very simple to use. Okay, so I've uh, this. Okay, so notice that price are uh, supported here. Okay, supported. Okay, in fact, if you look left, you can see that there was some form of structure over here and over here, okay? So what happens is that after price broke it, uh, you can see that uh, there was a sell down, 
Okay, so what you could have done is that you could have uh, map, map out the high and low and uh, watch for a break of this level over here. Okay, and then you trade the breakout in the lower time frame. Okay, so in this case, it would have been a very nice trade. Okay, if you had went to the lower time frame, let's say the H4 charts, you catch the breakout and then you know you put your stop loss uh, just a couple of uh, points, uh, pips above this uh, this uh, support with some form of buffer, right? And then you just uh, hope that the price goes in your direction. Okay, so that's how you use the, this uh, long leg doji. That's how you trade it, okay? Now let's move on to the second kind of a doji, which is the dragonfly doji. Okay, this is a doji with a long uh, lower wick. Okay, I have it written over here. Long lower wick. So you can see over here, price went down, but in the end, price came back up. Okay, so when does this usually happen? Okay, this usually happens when price hits a strong level over here. Okay, or, or there is a support over here and price is trying to flush all the stop losses uh, below the support. Okay, so uh, I have a comprehensive video about this concept about you know uh, a doji or you know like a uh, pin bar being a either bounce of a strong level or a flash of a key level. Okay, so I will leave the link to this uh, video in the top right. Okay, so if you have not watched that about the two kinds of pin bar, uh, then you want to watch that video after this. Okay, because uh, that video I go into depth you know, how, how, how this works, okay? But uh, for the purpose of this video, okay, uh, this is what usually happens, okay? When this happens, you will see a dragonfly doji, okay? So how do you trade it? Okay, a dragonfly doji is very straightforward, okay? You want to wait for price to trade above the candle high. So if this is the candle high, you want, want to wait for price to just trade above, okay? You can use a buy stop, which is a, uh, a stop order to buy at a higher price, meaning that uh, when price breaks this high, uh, your trade will be triggered automatically, okay? Again, uh, I stress that you do not want to trade dragonfly dojis on its own. You do not want to trade every single uh, dragonfly doji. Okay, please use uh, these two questions. Okay, ask yourself what's the market condition. Then uh, look for a key uh, support and resistance level. Okay, so in, in the case of a uh, dragonfly doji, you want to buy at a strong support in an uptrend. Okay, so what's the market condition? Uptrend, what is the price level uh, you want to be looking at? A strong support. Okay, again, if you do not know all this, you're struggling, we have the, this all taught in the free day trading guide. So just check that out because it's free, right? Just, just check the link in the description. Okay, so that is a dragonfly doji. Okay, so let me show you. Okay, let me show you a case study. Okay, over here, you can see that uh, I have the euro dollar chart. Okay, so uh, the market condition is in an uptrend. Okay, uh, why do I say it's uptrend? Uh, you can see that this is a high. Okay, this is a low, this is a higher high, and this is higher low, and this is a higher high, okay? So this is a series of uh, higher highs and higher lows, so we are in an uptrend, okay? So in an uptrend, what do you want to do? You want to be buying at support, okay? So where do you buy, okay? Look at this over here, this candle that I, I highlighted over here, okay? You can see that uh, this is a very good level because number one, there's a inverted head and shoulders pattern, okay? This is the uh, left shoulder, okay? This one over here. Okay, here is the head and here is the right shoulder. Okay, that, that's the chart pattern. And in fact, if you look left, your market structure. Okay, let me show you. Um, if you look left, you can see that this level was the previous uh, swing high. This level was the previous swing high. And where did price retrace to? Back into the previous market structure, which is this zone of... Um, Resistance, which used to be resistance, now is acting as support. So if you buy this, you know, um, over here, okay, on this candle, it will have been a nice trade. Okay, so this is how you trade uh, this kind of doji. Okay, so hopefully that is clear. Let's move on to the last kind of doji, which is the gravestone doji. So what is a gravestone doji? Okay, gravestone doji is the same exact as the uh, this one over here. Okay, same as a dragonfly fly, except that it's the opposite, meaning that this is in a bearish scenario. Okay, so the difference is that uh, this one has a long upper wick. Okay, so you can see over here that uh, price traded up and then it came all the way down. Okay, so same thing as the, the previous one. Okay, it usually happens when price hits a strong resistance level over here or there is some form of resistance here and price is trying to flush out all the stop losses over here. Okay. So how do you trade this? 
okay same thing okay you want to look for price to trade below the candle low and what you can do is you can do a sell stop okay or you can just watch for the market to trade lower and you just place the uh, the your your entry by executing a market order okay same thing as as before you do not want to trade every single gravestone doji you want to identify the market condition then you apply uh, the gravestone doji okay you want to be selling a gravestone doji in a downtrend at a key resistance level okay this is very important okay now this is a case study again this one is a very simple uh, case study okay so uh, again we are looking at a uh, euro dollar okay what is the market condition okay in this case i would consider it more of a um, kind of like ranging why okay why because uh, you see it went down it go up it go back down okay it went back higher in fact this candle over here close above uh, this uh, level of uh, 1.3678 okay so i would i wouldn't call this bearish but i would say it's ranging okay uh, right because uh, you, you don't, do not see a lower low immediately uh, at this point in time, at this candle here, all you have seen is that price uh, came back to challenge this uh, recent uh, swing high. Okay, now on hindsight, it did make a lower low. But if let's say uh, you were watching the market in real time at this candle over here, uh, you would think that uh, you know this candle has closed above this resistance level. So you would think that it is more of a ranging scenario rather than a uh, you know downtrend. Okay, so. Anyway, uh, price is still at a resistance because what happened is that on this candle over here, this candle here, what happens is that uh, you have some form of flushing, flushing of stop losses. Okay, remember earlier on I say that uh, it usually happens when there's a flush of resistance. So this is exactly what has happened. Okay, uh, the resistance level, uh, it's over here. Okay, and what price did was it push higher to stop a, a lot of uh, retail traders out. Okay, the institutional traders are coming in and are filling their orders over here uh, before they start pushing price down. Okay, so in this case, the market condition is ranging and there's a false break of previous swing high and price is at previous resistance. Okay, so just uh, take the trade when price comes a bit lower, put your stop loss uh, somewhere above here and you would have gotten yourself a nice trade. Okay, so that's how you trade uh, this doji. Okay, so hopefully uh, you, this is very clear. Okay, so just a recap, okay, of uh, today's lesson. So I talk about what is a doji. Okay, a doji is a candle with a uh, same open and close. Okay, you do not need to be anal about it. You do not need to, you know, measure the distance. Okay, as long as you eyeball it, it, it the open and close, it's kind of quite close to each other and it has a tight body. You can consider that as a doji. Okay, I also talk about how not to trade dojis. Okay, never trade it in isolation. Okay, you always want to consider the market condition and support and resistance level. Okay, I talk about the three kinds of uh, dojis the dragonfly doji which is actually a bullish setup the gravestone uh, doji which is a bearish setup and the long leg uh, doji which you can use to trade the range or a breakout okay depending on how price react at the upper you know at the upper week or the lower week okay so you want to watch out for that okay so that's it for this video if you have any questions make sure to leave a comment down below uh, our team will do our best to address it okay if you have not subscribed please subscribe okay because uh, it, it helps us to, to grow as a channel and we can help reach more traders uh, like yourself okay if not thanks for watching i'll see you in the next video